National Geographic announced yesterday that an expedition has successfully placed a weather station on a volcano in the Chilean Andes at 19,000 feet above sea level, making it the highest in the southern and western hemispheres. The station will send scientists near real-time data, such as temperature, relative humidity, wind speed and atmospheric pressure. The team was led by climate scientist and National Geographic explorer Dr. Baker Perry, who has also installed a network of weather stations, including the two highest in the world on Mount Everest. Dr. Perry is here to tell us more. Welcome to the show, Dr. Perry. We really appreciate you talking with us. You certainly have a lot of experience installing weather stations in some remote places. Tell us about the challenge of getting up to the top of a volcano at 19,000 feet, all while carrying your gear, and by the way, a large weather station. This expedition was uh, a major challenge uh, from the beginning. It's a very remote mountain in Chile. It's extremely high. It's very windy, and we were pinned down by a blizzard on part of the expedition. Uh, our horse team encountered a very deep snow uh, on the higher mountain that uh, made it a major challenge moving things up. and. Uh, and we had a tremendous team that we worked with that uh, ultimately uh, led us to a successful expedition. So we were very fortunate for that regard. And the expedition, of course, took place right in the middle of a global pandemic. How were you and your team of 12 able to pull this off safely? The pandemic was another major challenge that uh, presented um, a number of logistical considerations. So I had to arrive uh, two weeks early for a quarantine. Our uh, photographer that came in from Mexico also quarantined for an extended period of time. Our entire Chilean team joined us at the end of the quarantine. We had multiple COVID tests. We had an expedition doctor on the um, on the mountain as well that was enforcing the protocols and uh, also conducting COVID testing. And so that was a, a, another major challenge, of course, on this expedition. And just a little while ago, we showed some video of just some wind, just it seems like punishing wind over the tents there. Is it, does it feel as brutal as it looks? It was. It was. It was pretty brutal out there. The uh, temperature was well below zero, and uh, the winds were were quite high. Fortunately, we had come down and had successfully installed the weather station by that point. Uh, but um, uh, we were uh, pinned in our tents for for quite some time, for sure. And the weather stations that you install on these high remote peaks have to be light enough to carry up the mountain and then assembled on site. Uh, we can see it. I believe we have some video of it. How steady and reliable are they in such difficult climates? Well, we, these stations have been engineered to withstand winds well over 200 miles an hour, and uh, we're pretty confident in the ability of the structure to withstand the winds. What is a bit of an unknown is uh, whether the instruments can in withstand direct impacts from small rocks that are sometimes picked up by these extremely high winds. And when a, when a rock impacts a, a wind sensor or a temperature sensor or a solar panel at 150 miles an hour, it can uh, do some substantial damage. And so that is the big unknown as to how long these instruments will, will last in those conditions. Uh, but we're going to try to keep them going as, as long as we can. And considering many of the challenges that you've just been describing, why was it so important to install this weather station in Chile right now? Well, this weather station in Chile right now is so important because the entire region around Santiago is in the middle of a mega drought. And since 2010, precipitation is rainfall down low and snowfall up high has been well below normal. This is a region with over 6 million people. And uh, the long-term impacts on the water resources are a major concern because glaciers are retreating and uh, with more variable precipitation patterns, there is real concern about the future of this water tower that provides such important resources downstream. And what else does it tell us about the, the rest of our planet as far as all this, this data that you're able to collect from the, these weather stations? 
Well, one of the real uh, interesting factors is that even though these highest reaches of the planet where the glaciers are found are so important for water resources, we, we don't really have many observations from these locations and, and don't fully understand the meteorological processes that are driving the disappearance of the glacier ice. And so uh, these observations are critically important not only in Chile, but also across the Himalayas and other portions of the Andes to uh, make better projections of future climate change and especially water resource availability. And lastly, how long did it take you to get up and down, and, and which way is, is the more challenging of the two? Well, it was a 15-day expedition. We started uh, walking at uh, 6,000 feet and uh, went up over 21,000 feet. And uh, I think coming down is uh, more of a challenge, especially on summit day when uh, we're tired and uh, and uh, it's been a long day already and just being extra careful of coming down when uh, our reserves are depleted are, are certainly the biggest challenge, I think. Dr. Perry, we thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you talking with us. Thank you so much for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.